uh, and uh, I can't wait to, to hear more about um, uh, what the implications are, um, and depending on how we define uh, evidence-based and uh, um, what's the latest, latest development are in, uh, in the field. Uh, uh, and from you, uh, which are the m most in contact with the, the, these la last developments. So, um, Cynthia, do you want to um, microphone? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. And, Please. Um, you know, and thank you for letting us start out this great plenary. And it's really been the joy of my life ever since the 1990s to work on the evidence base of solution-focused brief therapy. And it's something I really got involved with initially uh, supporting the work of Enzu Kimberg and Steve DeShazer, who I was also trained at the Brief Family Therapy Center in Milwaukee uh, by them. And uh, they were very supportive of the idea that we needed to develop the solution-focused uh, therapy into a, an evidence-based practice. And so I've been working on this now uh, for um, over 20 years. And I've been really happy over the last 10 years we've made a lot of progress. Um, I have here with me Johnny Kim, who actually came through our PhD program at the University of Texas at Austin and is now a distinguished faculty member at the University of Denver <laughs> School of Social Work. So we're very proud of him because he's also become like an eminent researcher in the, in, in the field. And so I guess one of the great things about being a professor or a faculty member is you get to develop students you know, that also become, you know, researchers in the field. And at this point in my life, that uh, probably is the most important thing and to me <laughs> personally. So uh, Johnny and I are going to kind of conjointly do our presentation together, and he's going to put a PowerPoint up. Um, I think this is a great thing to be able to join with uh, all of you other people, distinguished scholars here, and I'm looking forward to learning uh, from you. and. Uh, We'll, we'll put a PowerPoint up and walk through some of the things that we've been doing in the North America, in the U.S., and that have also now spread out into other countries, you know, as we've gotten involved in, in research in, in China and Latin America as well. So, um, Johnny, do you want to put the PowerPoint up, up there? And, you know, we could all talk on about this for a long, long time. So, um, Johnny and I wanted to talk um, basically about... a a little bit about the research committee mission and function and you know about why we need to review our evidence and solution focused brief therapy and how we've done that and how we need to position our evidence and how we need to improve our evidence and so I'm going to focus a little bit on the research committee um, mission and function of the SFBTA the solution focused brief therapy association which I think you all know is the you know uh, you know, arm of uh, in North America uh, of solution focused brief therapy, where we run a conference and uh, have also inherited some of the functions of the Brief Family Therapy Center in Milwaukee. You know, where Enzu Kimberg, you know, kept um, you know a kind of a legacy and and training materials and so forth um, of solution focused brief therapy. So, Johnny, the PowerPoint disappeared. So, can you put it back up where I can see it again to be? Um, helpful. Okay. Oh, is it there? Yes, it is there. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you. I've been the chair of this committee, um, you know, for about the past, I say, three or four years. But before that time, I served on it, you know, until uh, really, and uh, I served on it until the 19, um, since the 19 early, early, I guess about early 2000s, really, you know, actually, you know, when we actually really got the committee going. So um, having said that, I'll tell you a little bit about the developments. And the PowerPoint disappeared again, Johnny, so you need to put it back up there so I can remember Sorry, all I'm, the things to say. I'm yeah. Um, uh, one of the. Yeah, I think if yes. you click on it, uh, on Johnny's uh, picture, it will come up and you can see it all the time. I think it disappeared. OK, I think I see it. OK, That's good. I got it. Thank you very much for the help, the technical help, Carolyn. The SFBTA Research Committee uh, was something that the SF, that evolved out of the SFBTA um, conference and where researchers joined together to, and we began to brainstorm about how we could advance the solution-focused brief therapy into an evidence-based practice. And so some of the developments that have come out of that ha that have been supported by the 
by the SFBTA, you know, is that we wanted to do a treatment manual because to, uh, to, that was one of the things that we really needed to understand what solution-focused brief therapy was for researchers so that we could, you know, put that out into, um, you know, research communities so that they could understand what the intervention is and that we could get better fidelity with the intervention. So we did develop a treatment manual and uh, last year we uh, developed a second edition of that manual. It's available at sfbta.org and you, anyone can download it for free. You know, we made it available. We also published it, you know, in a book, a Solution Focused Brief Therapy, a Handbook of Evidence-Based Practice, which I edited along with uh, some other researchers in the field, Terry Trepper, uh, Wally Gingrich, and Eric McCollum. Um, one of the things that we focused on in this committee early on is we wanted to um, discover what it takes to make Solution Focused Brief Therapy into an evidence-based practice so it could be recognized by the U.S. government. <laughs> that was important. That's important to uh, pr interventions in the U.S. for them to be funded and accepted into practice communities. And so we actually um, did a study of that and we did publish an article called Is Solution Focused Brief Therapy Evidence-Based that talks about that process. We learned a lot uh, through that about what was necessary uh, to actually get the evidence up into national registries so we can submit our evidence and Johnny's going to talk about that more about how we you know took the knowledge um, and then and then used it to submit solution focused brief therapy into these uh, registries that were associated with the with the US government so we could get it recognized as an as an evidence based practice one of the things that the SFBTA did that, that helped the research and helped, helped our, our work a great deal is they funded uh, research awards that were uh, a part of the uh, committee's work and we were able to then fund young scholars, you know, doctoral students and, you know, other people that were doing mainly intervention studies but studies that would advance the solution focused um, brief therapy and so we've had a number of those and then they um, are become associated with us they come to the conference they present their research they publish it in journals and we've been quite successful and our proposals for the research have been getting better and stronger you know over the last few years we keep getting better better proposals and better uh, better better um, young scholars that are you know uh, actually doing uh, very innovative and important intervention studies in, in the field and that was again to encourage the, the young scholars to um, contribute to solution focused research. Uh, I think the EB, I know the EBT does something similar to this you know because I've served on that committee now you know where they encourage research but ours is a little different because we focused um, not just on scholars in general but on the young scholars and the doctoral students as uh, you know as a part of our part of our work. Um, the other thing that we did uh, do every year is, um, and we continue is to have a research day at the annual conference. And this was really meant to network, uh, you know, participants together, uh, practitioners and researchers, uh, so that, uh, and it had a really uh, positive effect because it brought a lot of the solution-focused researchers together, uh, where we could dialogue about research. And uh, that has had a, had a good effect in terms of being able to help us to work on projects and carry out some of these other things like with the national registries and so forth. You can change the slide. The next thing I want to focus on, you know, is really the, a little bit about, you know, how we have, you know, reviewed our evidence um, and encouraged people to do that. Um, and I'll, I want to just walk you through some of, this, uh, some of the things that we did. You know, when solution-focused brief therapy first started out, just like this cartoon we have up here now, it really was, an, um, you know, uh, people in a clinic that were doing almost like qualitative research, you know, that were looking at, you know, trying to develop this intervention. And uh, they discovered some amazing things, you know, in this discovery-oriented research um, in, in the clinic. However, you can change the slide again, Johnny. However, you know, over time, when you think about getting these things up where it, they're recognized by other scholars and other researchers and where they can be funded, even interventions, uh, then we realize that we have to have much more rigorous designs. And 
whether you like it or not, you know, we have to resort to statistics, <laughs> you know, to, and research methodologies uh, to make that happen. At least that's very important in the U.S., you know, and the way that our, our research is, um, is, is carried out there and the way that our practices are recognized. Go ahead, John Yi Ching. So one of the things we did early on, um, you know, was uh, the researchers that were associated with this with this group and also Wally Gingrich, is that we decided, and it was a vision of Enzo Kim Bird, that we needed to have a book that could uh, review the evidence of our of our research. And this was something that a lot of people participated in around the world. And we developed this book, a Solution Focused Brief Therapy, a Handbook of Evidence Based Practice. And we also had it published by Oxford University Press which is a, a prestigious publisher, you know, to give it attention. That's what my main publisher. I've had a lot of, uh, you know, experience with that publisher uh, and do a lot of work with them, you know, even currently I'm the editor-in-chief of the Encyclopedia of Social Work, and that is a, a publication, one of the reference publications in the, in the U.S. and also spreads out through the world and I have other books with them. And we are fortunate that they picked up this work. It's now been translated into different languages like Japanese and Chinese, as well, and so it's you know sort of moving out and you know into into the world. But Enzu traveled a lot, as you know, in the world. And what she said, you know, to me and to other researchers is, I believe there's a lot of a lot of research. I hear about it as I go, but it's not being pulled together in one place. And so she first talked to Alsdair McDonald about trying to develop a book like this. And somehow over time, it got handed off to me as the lead <laughs> editor. On it, I don't know how that happened. You know, I think it's just because I was willing to do the work, <laughs> and that's how that how that happened. And many of you, you know, of course, even on this panel, they participated in that. And I think it's uh, has the potential to have a positive effect, you know, in understanding the evidence-based solution for this brief therapy. Go ahead, Johnny Ting. Of course, there's been many other works on this. We've made a lot of progress. Um, you know, there's meta-analyses, and we have this uh, one that was done by Stams et al. that came out of the Netherlands, and that was actually the, one of the first meta-analyses in the field. And then you see the one up there that Johnny did in 2008 um, was also a very important contribution uh, to the field. It was actually the best read journal um, an article in the journal Research on Social Work Practice for three or four years. It was the most cited and the most, you know, read, you know, journal article. So when it got in there, it got a lot of attention, and that was Johnny's dissertation research. So, you know, it, it, it has made contributions. And in all of our studies, we've been able to show also, importantly, you know, that solution-focused brief therapy is having you know, some effects, you know, on clients. And in Johnny's study in, in particular, uh, it was uh, shown, you know, that there were, you know, small effects that's good, you know, that, you know, especially in the internalizing disorders um, showed uh, effectiveness. He also found in that study that, the, that there was a lot of promise for the school-based uh, studies. And then in STAMS, showed, you know, the small to medium effect sizes. And another thing that they showed that was important is that we could get that with, you know, small numbers of sessions. So those were all important reviews. A more recent review was done by Wally Gingrich and uh, Lance Peterson. It was, uh, you know, was a qualitative systematic review of the literature. And it included, you know, 43 studies. Um, you can see on the slide uh, there was positive benefit with the SFBT. Um, there was, you know, positive trends, you know, in 23% of even the studies. And again, he found, you know, an interesting finding is that the strongest evidence for effectiveness came to the treatment of depression in adults with four separate studies found SFBT to be comparable with well-established alternative treatments like cognitive behavioral therapy, <laughs> for example. And three studies examined length of treatment and all found SFBT used fewer sessions than alternative therapy. So those those reviews, you know, become important, you know, to understanding our overall evidence. You go ahead and change it again, Johnny. I really like this uh, review here that came out of the uh, out of the UK. It, it was published in a journal with a very high impact factor. I was, you know, very impressed with it. Um, it was rigorously done. It was for practitioners, and in this uh, one, they looked at child and family. 
um, interventions, uh, Bond, Woods, and uh, et al. There, the F SFAT was also found to be an effective um, intervention, especially early intervention, where the presenting problems are not severe. And so that, if you haven't read that review, I really encourage you to pull that one up and 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 take a look at it. it it's a it's a, a a good review of the literature. Okay, Johnny. The the Johnny and I have focused a lot also on the school settings, and we published two reviews of the literature. You know, in that area, uh, one that dealt specifically uh, with a review of all the outcome studies that we could find um, on solution focused brief therapy in schools, and another one was was published in relationship to looking at school social work practice studies that were conducted, and you know, the solution focused studies were also included in that review. So. It gives a gives a, a different picture, you know, of the kinds of uh, interventions that are being done in schools. Most recently, um, we've gotten involved. I, you know, was contacted by researchers in China, in mainland China in particular, and they uh, wanted us, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, get their uh, literature out into the U.S. Uh, we started working on uh, some articles, and uh, first we published an article that just dealt with the practices of solution-focused brief therapy in mainland China, you know, looking at the different settings and uh, different ways that it was being applied there. Uh, and then we were able to do a meta-analysis of their studies, of their outcome studies in mainland China. Um, I think this makes a great contribution. It shows that the work has moved into China. And I was just in China in July doing training over there. And I went through Taiwan and I went into mainland China and did clinical training on the solution focused brief therapy and met many people that were applying it um, in China, um, you know, in the, in the health and mental health settings and also in the school settings. And uh, it's really spreading in China. It's a new development. The first uh, article on solution focused brief therapy was published in 2002 in China. And since that time, it's been growing um, steadily um, in, you know, it, across uh, you know, uh, the, the Chinese providences. Go ahead, John. And then another thing, I have a student that came from uh, Chile. Um, uh, she uh, is now doing her dissertation research. She's gone back to Chile and taken a, a job in a prominent uh, Chilean university in Santiago. But she was sent by the Chilean government to learn interventions in the United States and to get a PhD. And uh, she has now uh, taken on solution-focused brief therapy. She's very enthusiastic about it. She was a therapist that came out of the family services, works a lot in primary care clinics and, and clin in Chile and very interested in the substance use. And uh, she uh, uh, wanted to uh, do her dissertation research in, on solution-focused brief therapy. So we started with this uh, systematic review looking at the applications of solution-focused brief therapy with Latino populations. That's important to the U.S. It's important to migrant populations in general. I think you know about the migration of people out of South America and uh, into the U.S. and other countries, and that's very important. Um, and so she was interested in that. So we did this systematic review with Latinos, and it you know it builds on the kinds of work that Mark you know has done you know with his uh, trying to spread you know it, it, it with the Lat in the Latino populations. And, uh, but this particularly didn't focus on you know, Spain, but on the, the Latin American uh, countries. And so we uh, did that, and, and we found uh, some beginning uh, research studies and that are applied you know, in that area as well in children, adolescents, schools, couples, mental health settings, and so forth. Go ahead, John. So uh, mm. now I'm going to uh, talk about, um, in terms of, with this research, one of the things that we've realized is that we need to position our evidence. Now that we have uh, sort of compiled and synthesized a number of studies, we have to uh, sort of use that to, to position and sort of get the word out there. And so a lot of this started years ago when uh, Sarah Smock Jordan and I were both doctoral students and again sort of working with Cynthia Franklin and uh, Terry Trepper and uh, Eric McCollum and we sort of kept hearing about the importance of evidence-based practice in the United States as well as in Europe 
And one of the questions that Sarah and I kind of talked about uh, to each other was, well, how does, how does an intervention or a therapy model get on this list? And what is this evidence-based list that, you know, uh, we need to sort of go to? And after kind of doing that sort of process, we recognized that, um, at least here in the United States, it's not as clearly defined as... Um, as people sort of tend to think, as practitioners and research like to think, and there is no sort of one registry that everyone goes to to, to look at for evidence-based uh, practice or interventions. And so out of that sort of conversation at the SFBTA conference uh, several years ago, uh, we realized that someone within the solution-focused brief therapy community needed to get SFBT on these national registries. And so we set out to start identifying which in the United States, which ones are the national registries, what's sort of the process, uh, and then to actually go through the process of submitting SFBT uh, as an evidence-based, uh, to get reviewed as an evidence-based uh, intervention. And so uh, we've been continuing to do that, as Cynthia mentioned, now through the SFBTA Research Committee, uh, because it's a, it's a huge undertaking, and it's, it's uh, pretty complicated. Uh, but so far in the United States, we, we have it on uh, the SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse Mental Health Service Administration's National Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and Practices, which I think is, uh, especially around mental health and substance abuse related problems, is one of the, the premier national registries that federal funders look at, that uh, reimbursement health uh, health reimbursement agencies look at uh, as a place uh, to determine is it evidence-based. Uh, we were on the Office of uh, Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention uh, Registry, but then they have recently uh, revised the criteria and uh, to mimic similar to uh, NREP's uh, protocol. And so we have resubmitted uh, SFBT uh, for review on that one. And then there are several others that we are working on uh, getting submitted. Uh, the California Evidence-Based Clearinghouse. It's uh, one of the premier uh, child welfare national registries that uh, look at for uh, looking at children who have been abused or neglected. And uh, in the United States, child, uh, child welfare workers, case workers are investigating and providing services for the parents around child well-being, family functioning. Uh, the California Evidence-Based Clearinghouse is, is a registry that is, is looked look to for uh, EBP. And then uh, in, the, in our education department, the What Works Clearinghouse is, is another major registry, although they have, uh, for the last couple of years, been focused more on interventions or programs that address academic uh, outcomes. So uh, programs that improve reading skills or math skills. So uh, that we're waiting and hoping that they'll uh, get back to uh, looking at uh, interventions uh, that address uh, kind of mental health and uh, behavioral issues that SFBT targets. And then the, the last one that we're also very interested in getting on is uh, HRSA, the Health uh, Resources and Service Administration, and that's more for the medical community. And we know SFBT is uh, getting very popular in, in the medical uh, settings here in the U.S. and, and elsewhere, and uh, so we're looking to, to do that. Uh, another area that we're looking to try to position our evidence is uh, increasing the number of schools and departments that teach SFBT as a clinical model. Uh, this is sort of my own, uh, I don't have any research to back this up, but more just anecdotally, um, I think part of the sort of issue that we need to uh, position for SFBT is for universities and um, sort of clinical uh, uh, programs to teach it as a standalone. I think a lot of programs will cover SFBT in conjunction with other brief therapy models, but I don't think there's enough people who can teach it and promote it. So you have students that are uh, graduating uh, being taught that the only evidence-based interventions are cognitive behavioral therapy or motivational interviewing or, you know, play therapy, and SFBT sort of gets left off that uh, conversation. And I think uh, the more schools and uh, universities and, and departments uh, that can teach it 
uh, I think the the more the we're going to position ourselves uh, as an evidence-based intervention, and then uh, also getting supervisors and managed care companies or other reimbursement agencies to recognize SFBT uh, as an evidence-based intervention. Um, it's great that we're getting on these national registries, but there's a lot of people who influence what uh, practitioners do on in the day-to-day -day field. Uh, Telling them that you know we don't, uh, you can't do SFBT because uh, we won't get reimbursed for it, or that's not an evidence-based intervention, and you know we want you to use you know f some other uh, brief therapy models, and and I get that a lot from my students saying that you know my manager or this you know uh, re health uh, reimbursement agency won't pay for services if I use SFBT because they don't think it's evidence based so I think we need to position our evidence now to help get that word out and sort of debunk that myth and so the, the last thing I wanted to touch upon is sort of the, the need to improve our evidence. And this sort of goes hand in hand with uh, the previous uh, needing to position our evidence. Because as we continue to look at SFBT effectiveness, effectiveness with other populations, studies, and treatment problems using rigorous research designs and methods, uh, that's going to only help improve our national registries. So. Um, we are able to continue to submit new studies that get published on uh, mental health and substance abuse um, sort of studies to uh, NREP as well as these other uh, national registries in the United States and that's going to improve our ratings and I think that's also going to be an important not just getting on these registries but also having uh, good sort of ratings as well and then also to ha it helps generate new ideas about SFBT and improvements in SFBT treatment delivery. Uh, or there's a lot of talk in the U.S. around uh, treatment fidelity and implementations. And so people can say, I do solution-focused brief therapy, but you know, how do we really know they're staying true to sort of uh, the, the core models? Or are they doing deviating things that a lot of people may sort of question uh, or say, is it really uh, at, uh, sort of at the core SFBT? So uh, we need to sort of improve our evidence and look at uh, monitoring treatment fidelity, implementation. And as Cynthia talked about, we can see it spreading to other countries and doing research to try to learn how well did it work in those areas and what was sort of uh, useful or, or helpful for that population. So uh, so that's kind of all. I'm going to kind of uh, pass that along to, to the next group.